Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanters channel. Today I went out, um, did a little bit of visiting, looking for stuff. Um, I went to, uh, the first place I went to was a place called Click Antiques and Vintage in Northampton because I live in Northampton and uh, yeah it's very local I think it, as a proper antique centre it's my most local one and it's, it's a good place I've, I've often picked up bargains. I my film's going to be quite long because there was a there's a lot of glass there. Um, um, it's a very mixed bunch of stuff, and uh, yeah, I did come back with something. I came back with this. Yeah, it's uh, looks very normal to most people. Um, to me, this is a bit special. I one one of the areas I collect is I collect Stromberg's heightened glass that was imported to the UK in the um in the 1930s and um, this is a piece of that so yeah it's very hard to find um so yeah i'm always got my eyes out for that um it's a bit uh, yeah uh, un uncut common collectorship i would say but um yeah i'm happy to have that it cost me 12 pounds so snatched it off the shelf and um, yeah, came home with it. So yeah, I hope you like this video. Hello, um, I, I'm here at Click Antiques in Northampton, uh, as you can see from the sign behind me, and they've kindly given me permission to come in and film. Um, Click Antiques is a, a, a small antique centre that's just off the Kettering Road in Northampton. It's in a little side street, as you can see. Um, but it's got its own parking, so yeah, it's a good place. I, I'm a regular customer here, so I'm gonna pop in now and have a look around. So this is the antique centre, uh, the desk is down there in the corner and um, I always come and start in this corner uh, because there's always good things here. I shouldn't, have bothered, I shouldn't have bothered turning my camera off there because as I walk up here's a nice little double oaken salt, probably Victorian um, and then I can't remember what this pattern's called, it's white fryers. Um, they are five pounds each. Um, yeah, these little white prize fruit bowls. And then, um, of interest here, yeah, here are some Stuart Crystal. Um, they've not said it's 23 for six. Little sherry glasses. They marked. Yeah, it says Stuart England. Um, this pattern's called Arundel. Um, and I think that pattern's from the 1930s. I'm not sure where the, when the mark's from. In the nice. Don't know what that is. Looks very Scandinavian. Um, and as you know, Scandinavian's not my thing. I'm just trying to learn it. Um, why not be? Oh, actually, there's more of those white fries glasses there. Um, Sunday dishes there as well, so there's five in total. Oh, here's a nice, as we go along, pressed Victorian uh, beer glass, probably from a pub. Uh, five pounds. And as we move up, nice um, royal type decanter. Looks like the original stopper. Yeah, it feels like the original stopper. Um, yeah, 1830s. Here's a, these are faux rings. So this is a copy of a Regency style decanter. Um, yeah, the rings are pressed out from the inside. I'll take the top off. I can actually feel inside that the ring is pressed out. It's not an applied ring where they've wrapped a sausage of glass around the ring. Here's another decanter. I'm not going to get it down the second because I've got a camera in one hand and I don't want to break anything. It's difficult to tell. It might be a copy. Let me get the stopper down and have a good closer look at it. So yeah the stopper is kind of saying I've had a bit of use so it might be a good one. Um, they want 28 for that. They want 
less for this good copy, if it is a copy, they want less for this good copy than they want for this bad copy. Um, don't know who made this. Could be anybody. Um, this looks like it might be Franco Belgium, maybe. Bohemian cocktail. It says 2030s, probably right. Let's see, they've got, this is why I like this, this one here. Look, they've got a whole pile of glass here. Nice um, Victorian ale glass, seven quid. It's pressed, it's not cut, but still, it's a nice pub glass. Um, oh, I've got my hand in front there, sorry. Need to watch out for that. Uh, Victorian decanter in the back here. Uh, another royal type from the 1830s. Um, not sure what you call these the, the cylinder decanters. They're small ones, so these are only um, like one pinters. Four rings. That's not unusual, but there's a pair, but they don't have stoppers, so um, and they're Regency. Um, yeah, that's missing a stopper. It looks like a carafe, but I'm not sure it is because I can feel something there. Um, we've got. Set of four Victorian. Um, I've got my finger over the thing. Set of four Victorian um, champagne glasses there. Um, gorgeous glasses, fourteen pounds little. They are quite nice actually. I think these are Victorian. Nice hollow stems. That's that, those are really quality ones. Um, yeah, if you see this style here i believe these are made in romania so they're not they're kind of like probably 60s or something but i think they're made in romania um little custard glasses these might be pre-war ones uh pal mal these are acid etched these little lines uh love the giver oh sorry this is nice um, it's flashed, so th this is actually an applied colour, I don't think it's glass on the surface, some sort of lacquer I think they did, um, I think that's Bohemian. So there's a gluck look in the back there, it looks like a home guard one, but it's missing the stopper, nice crackle glass jug, I think that's Bohemian. What else have we got here? A couple of Medina paperweights. That's Dartington. I can't remember what the pattern number is. I might look that up and show you later. So you can see that there's actually a whole range of these kinds of glasses, of vases, little square vases with different, different colours and patterns on the surface. And, um, and they all have a unique pattern number. So I might pull out my book later and show you that. I'm going to take a little break so that I can cut this off now. So the little um, Dartington vase that you were seeing there, I have this book here. Yeah. First 20 years, Dartington Glass um, by, what's the names again? Uh, yeah, Linda and Stuart Smithson. And uh, yeah, it's a really good book. I can recommend this book highly. It's it's just packed, 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 packed with pictures of everything, literally everything they did for those 20 years. And the vase is there. Yeah. And it's dated 1968, pattern number uh, FT60. So um, it's called a square daisy candle holder. So there you go. No prices here, but. Uh, this is stuff that was made through the 60s and 70s and 80s and um, it's it's not massively expensive. Um, a lot of it is of the nice derivative of Swedish glass, um, but it is something, if you're looking for the collection of the UK that you can find, there's a really good book there and um, you can find it at decent prices. So these are nice. 
the colour looks like um, Stuart Crystal colour, post-war colour, but I don't know who made them. They haven't got cut puntal marks, so yeah, they're probably not Stuart Crystal. Um, yeah, I think they are lead crystal. I don't know who made those. Uh, there's another one. These are sometimes called celery vases. If they have the word celery written on them, that means that they were made during the war. Because um, during World War II, you weren't allowed to make vases. But you could make um, tableware for the table. So you could make a vase like this, this kind of shape, put the word celery on it to make sure that everybody knew it was for celery. There's one behind here that can you hear the difference, isn't there? Yeah, and this one here, which is as thin, but that's not lead crystal. And what have we got here? Oh, 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 oh. I found something for me. Oh, look, look, I'm having this. It's um, let me get it in a bit because there's a load more stuff here. Uh, this is a Stromberg Titan. It says 30s and 40s. This is a 30s uh, Stromberg's Heighten vase in the wild. Yay. Um, I'm having that. That's coming home with me. It's not that big. I think it's about eight inches. But yeah, that's a, a decent find. Um, yeah, there's, there's a bunch of these kind of vases. Um, this might be Rihi Maki or somebody, it's cased. You can see it's inside there. The bottom, you can see it's clear on the outside and then um, it's kind of got a yellow color the inside. Um, here's a bunch of little white fries, bits and pieces. Oh, this one's, there's a couple more that are, they said these are Rihi Maki. So look, look, you can see what I mean by it. it's cased as well. Look at it clear inside. Nice. I think this one's called um, chimney vase by some people. Um, I don't know what this one's called. But yeah, that's Rihimaki as well. That's nice. Oh, and they've got, actually they've got it in red and amber. And they're, they're cased. Um, this. This little bowl here. This might be early white frost one is the um, amber color is the early amber, old amber they called it. Um, it says this is white frost, I don't think it is. The, the optics are too close together. Um, it looks very pale as well. Yeah, it's a very pale blue. I think this might be a Scandinavian one. It's almost like a, the colors like the Stromberg's heightened blue, which is very pale. Um, what else? Oh, what's this? Just check. Yeah. It's a copy. It's, it's like a firing glass, but it's, it's too clean, too nice. Um, it has got a broken pontal, but it's not 18th century. Mm, this is a nice little thing as well. It says it's signed to the base. Let me pull it out and see if I can see. Oh, right, okay, so this is interesting. So this is made by Mark Taylor. Um, it's dated as well. Uh, 1998. So this guy here, he makes copies of um, Roman glass. Um, when I do the um, the video, I will bring up uh, the website. Um, yeah, so this is something that people might want to collect. So he makes a lot of different ones. So that is a very interesting thing. What else have we got? Nothing. There's other bits and glasses here. Nothing exciting me. Uh, a couple more of the white fries glasses. Uh, Yeah, these are not very good. I think these might be French or something. Yeah, they didn't feel, <laughs> they didn't feel like they were um, lead crystal and they are not. I'm still on this stand because uh, I popped off 
because I was I didn't want to forget that strong because I heightened bars it was definitely coming home with me no matter what um, in here this is a nice little early piece I don't know what uh, looks Victorian uh, it might be Murano I don't know it's, I don't actually it's very machine made so yeah not as interesting as it first looked um, this will be um, dancing sun in the air he's got it on the bottom here so I've got my finger in the way again, £10. But it's a very plain, simple one, not coloured. They do come bigger as well. I've seen much bigger ones. Um, little jug in the back there. And you can't see, but I can see that there's a pontal mark on it. That might be web. Um, I think that pattern's called fur cone. And this is interesting as well. I don't know much about this. But that's quite, it's an etch pattern. It's not a common one. Um, I'd have to go through all my books and see if I've seen it. It looks familiar. Um, looks very Victorian. But it would be late Victorian because they weren't doing it before then. But it might be an early example of that kind of glass. And the glass also had a slightly purplish tint to it. Can you see that? And that's usually, um, some glass goes off after, over time and changes colour. Uh, yeah, interesting. Just in the next stand along, and um, there's a little continental decanter here. Small, can you see? Look how big it Yeah, just a handful. Um, soda glass, this will be. You can see that I've been showing you these so many times that with the base cut like that or pressed in like that. Uh, the stop is not the right one. This will be 1840s, 1850s, something like that. Um, possibly German because it's got. Um, oak leaves and um, acorns as the pattern um, and or Danish because I've seen that one in my Danish book as well so yeah and also this is why you should go to the places which don't have any glass because here we go here's a royal type it's, it's not it's bigger than a pint but I would say it's not quite a bottle but eight quid royal type 1830s normally these are dated as so they were probably made for about 20, 30 years, but yeah, um, decent little decanter for eight quid. This um, sort of like on the junction corner thing always has some interesting things. I've bought a few things from here. The first thing that these I'm not this is not my style, but people like some people like these. And he's got a good price on them, 120 pounds. Um, Bowles and Lemon. I might have thought they were. He's saying they're French. But he even knows the pattern number, Burn Castle design, so I'm going to trust him on that. He generally knows what he's doing. Um, he's also got, and he had a load more, um, an ale glass, Georgian ale glass, Riven ale glass, or dwarf ale glass, I should say, and um, a measure, a little gill, or jill, I should say, because I've been done for mispronouncing it, they're called jills. Um, but it doesn't have a line on it, so. Maybe it isn't. So normally there's a line somewhere around here which makes it a measure. And then down here, he's got um, another ale glass. And then the one with the lip going out, that's a jelly glass. And that's the difference between them. Uh, and then behind that, he's got something which is quite rare, which is a lace maker's lamp. Uh, let me go around the other side and see what he's got on the label. Yeah, Georgian lace maker's lamp, 180 pounds he's got on that. So yeah, what's he got back here? These are nice, they're very light. These will be um, churned out of the Czech Republic probably. Very light, um, very stylish. There's pity there's no decanter or jug to go with them, but there's a set of six of the, oh no, there's five, that's 18 pounds. Uh, what's he got on here? Yeah, so I believe this is a Stuart Crystal um, decanter from the probably from the 1920s, I think. If my memory is serving right, I can probably look that up in a catalogue and check it. What else has he got? There's a bit of crystally things here that are not that interesting. Um, so he says it's Georgian. It's not a Georgian jug. 
Yeah, see the way the handle's made? Blobbed here at the bottom and put through to the top. That didn't come in until the 1870s, so it's Georgian style. It might even be a 20th century copy. It's very nice though, a lot of detail. Um, it says it's damaged below the handle. I can't see it. I'm not gonna pick it up with one hand because um, I don't wanna break anything. Um, yeah. And what's this down here? This is interesting. Little mess and pop. It looks kind of. This is a difficult one because the handle says early, but the feel of it says later. There's a couple of bubble in the bottom, but the, the glass is very shiny. Oh no no no! This is early because look at that wear. Look at that wear on the. Can you see? There's like a frosted piece around the rim of the base and foot. Yeah, so it's just unusually clear. So this, stylistically, I would go 1840s, something like that, 1830s, especially with this style of lid. Something's not finished about this lid. It feels like it's going to fall out of your hand. So I'm wondering if that's been originally a different shape and someone's trimmed it down. Because it, it is almost trying to drop out of my hand, holding it. Um, he's also got a couple of more jugs here. These are also probably mid-Victorian. This is a pressed one. It's a nice early one. Look at this style here. This is a Georgian style um, pouring or oh, jug rim, but with the see the handle is actually separately applied. So this is not part of the molding process. This is semi, you know, this is pressed in the machine and then this is added by hand this handle so yeah that tells me yeah this is probably 1840s or something like that this handle here is put this way up this is a bit more classical I'll make this a little bit later but not too much later and then I bought a few of these um, to fill in some gaps in my own collection but he also has some cus cups um, these are all Victorian this is this one this one is an earlier one. This is molded to um, pebble cutting and usually when you see that on glasses they're usually kind of 1800 to 1820 so it kind of looks the same but then it's not and look at the piggy tail, it's nice piggy tails. They've all got nice piggy tails actually. Um, this one's especially nice. Can you see with a little bits in it and then he's got a few more over here um, this one looks like it might be earlier this one here but it feels the rim feels like it might have been trimmed at some point so yeah it could have been possible but I'm just gonna say no to that even though it looks earlier there trimmed um, lip says no it feels trimmed because normally you can feel when you feel the edge of something that's finished uh, it, it usually bulges slightly this doesn't it feels yeah, slightly more angular and just comes to a natural thin edge or not that unnatural thin edge because it's not been finished by hand so for all you white fries people here there's a nice um, bark I think this is, it doesn't have a pontal mark, so, mm, but it does have a lot of wear. I think it says pin dish, and it just says AF, yeah, so it's probably got, it's got a few little nicks on the edge here. Um, it's 55 pounds. I'll put the um, necklace back into it. Yeah. This is also at the same stand. This is nice as well. This is a super Victorian. Look at the base, the way the base is done, there's leaves pressed out, um, broken pontal, probably from Stavridge somewhere, look at that, um, uranium Vaseline glass patterning on it, very nicely done, yeah that's a, and it's, it says AF so there's something wrong somewhere, uh, so I was thinking oh 16 pounds but then I just bought the AF, um, 
so yeah that makes it okay if you want if you're into that kind of thing you might want that because you, you you probably won't find another one for those of you who are not from the uk this is what you see a lot of here this 20s and 30s press glass there's a big open salt here in fact it's almost, it's almost big enough to be a sugar dish that one um, then up here he's got a few other little bits and pieces so little food. I've not seen this before but it's got his label on which is very handy then we've got this uh, Masonic that's quite nice actually if you're collecting Masonic stuff, that's a good one at a very good price. If you look back at my um, the stuff that I was looking at in Norway, fifteen pounds. Yeah, that's and it's a nice cut one. It feels the cut is nice and sharp, so it's probably uh, pre-war. And then I've got some other little ones. Let's see. It says it's signed. Might be Stromberg's item. No, uh, this one's Scruff. Uh, this one looks like it's Stromberg's item. It's good. And yeah, it is it's upside down. And it's got the patent number and everything. Um, this will be a post war one. £22. So that's a good price, actually. Um, from what I've seen, I've seen people asking up to 60 quid for ones like this. It's about five or six inches tall. So yeah, that is a very good price. Um, it is post-war, so I'm not after that. I'm only looking for pre-war Stromberg Titan. Yep, nice little bit of um, Victorian Vaseline glass. The price is kind of, it's not cheap, but then it, it isn't. So um, over here though, yeah, there's a few more interesting glasses. Um, it's like a mixed set, £90 for six. So, they look... Um, so like the ones with the bladed knobs, those look like they're... Um, sort of like Regency, late Regency. Um, One's got an inverted lip and one hasn't. Yeah, the after my shocking revelations in in Norway, you never know. They could be continental. Um, and there's a bunch of other little soda glasses there. They all look to be Victorian. So you're always learning here. Um, there's a couple of blue enamel vases. See, there's one there and one there. And he's actually he's saying they're Spanish. And he's saying um, the name, Royo. Well, I've never heard of that before. I'm going to go home and look that up. Um, yeah, because it's another, it fills in a gap if that's what it is. This is why it's good to come to places like Google like crazy. Um, there's a few more little glasses down here. His um, ale glasses are £30, which is a decent price not super cheap but very decent because you know 30 pounds to 50 pounds is kind of normal so that's at the bottom end oh so as I promised I googled like crazy for Royo glass and um, yeah just Royo glass and up it comes and it's all of that f fluffy enameled glass so yeah I think from what I'm seeing on Google um, he looks like he's spot on. I've never heard of that before. But yeah, if you type in Google Royo glass, there's masses of enameled glass coming up and it looks just like that. And in fact, one of the pieces I found an exact copy for it. So I'm, I'm comfy that he's probably right. Um, it doesn't always work. I've not seen it in any books. Um, some, sometimes I've, I've made a mistake on, a, on the, uh, German half post um, video um, and, and I did it by basically being lazy just googling what I thought this might be and it because I'd seen it before and a lot of people were saying it was it and yeah stuff like that happens yeah sometimes you 
you're a bit lazy and rather than like flipping through hundreds of pages in your books to try and find something you just google and go oh yeah there we go and yeah it doesn't always work but anyway so it is royal glass it is a thing and it is from uh, spain i think one oh, knows so yeah so you live and learn um yeah i've mentioned that but here in the back yes there's another masonic glass and look at the base the base is like those norwegians ones so um to me that tells me this is it might be Hadland or it might be um, Scandinavian. Sorry about the bipping, but I'm getting closer to the entrance and people are coming in. This is a nice little quality item as well here. Um, finger bowl on a plate, matching plate with engraves. Um, grapes engraved. How much do they want for that? £28. Yeah, it's nice. Nice. And yeah, gorgeous spot in the back. Yeah, this is. Um, yeah, Medina. Look at that. There you go. With a little um, Maltese flag on it. Is it marked? Yeah, it's marked too. Um, they've not said it is, but that's what it is. Because it even says on the bottom. Um, yeah. So, I hope you enjoyed that, um, that video that basically trawled through. Um, and I could have gone on longer, honestly. Yeah, that's enough, isn't it? Um, so, um, yeah, I will give you um, the address of the Antique Centre and a link to its website um, in the description for this video. And I will be doing more of these and um, I've been invited back as well. God, you know, suckers for punishment. So, yeah, I will be going back and um, I hope hope you enjoyed this and, um, and if you want to see more please like and subscribe thank you bye